Welcome to a special holiday edition of Missing Artwork, a show that lets artists behind your favorite album art tell their story and experience in making the iconic image of the music you love. I'm your host, Michael Paul Esconuelas, and today we're talking to Jesse Ledoux, the designer behind the album art for David Bazan's Christmas album, Dark Sacred Night. It's that special time of year. The days are shorter, the nights are colder, and the Christmas albums buried in your record collection finally have a purpose again. For years, David Bazan has put out Christmas music in the form of 7-inch singles, many of which were designed by Ledoux. Finally, in 2016, Bazan decided it was time to gift the world with a full-length album of the Christmas music he had accumulated over the years. Dark Sacred Night's album art is an illustration that is layered with falling snow. Within the piece, the night is quickly developing into a deep darkness. The sky begins with a small purple glow of warmth that dissolves upward into a gradient of dark blue. At the focus of the artwork is a small cabin emitting a yellow light. Within the cabin, a silhouette of a lone person standing at the window. Ledoux's style of illustration contains a unique charm that immediately grabs you. By looking at the textures of the artwork and his use of colors, you can see Ledoux's knowledge of theory and detail within his work. In this episode, Ledoux talks about how he handled working with Bazan on the project and explains the passion behind his process of creating the somber yet festive feel for the record. My name is Jesse Ledoux. I am a graphic designer, uh, illustrator, art director, artist, thing maker, I think is, is the easiest way to do it. I was a an art director at Sub Pop Records for about five years, um, and then after that I, I left and have just been doing my own thing since. With such a rich history of working together, Ledoux's talents was an easy pick for the job of designer for Dark Sacred Night. Dave and I have been working together for a long time. I think the first thing I did with him, I know the first thing I did with him was uh, there was a Sub Pop Singles Club did a Pater the Lion 7-inch, and, and so I, I worked on that with him, which which was really cool because I I loved his, his earlier releases before that. So it was cool to work with him on that, and then we ended up becoming friends. We were roommates for a short amount of time, um, and we've just been buddies. Uh, and then I did a couple other singles for him after that, and then he asked me to do the Pater the Lion record, Achilles Heel. I did that, and then kind of around that same time, uh, I was also doing stuff for Suicide Squeeze Records. I did uh, an Elliott Smith 7-inch for them, um, and then Dave had just started doing these Christmas singles, like putting out one one 7-inch a year. Dave and David, David runs Suicide Squeeze Records, both of them wanted me to do the artwork for for the second single that, that Dave was putting out, the second uh, Christmas single that he was doing and then it just kind of ended up like any time dave did a, a christmas single i was i was kind of the guy with each of them I, i've i've wanted them to be pretty distinct and and look different so so like trying to not to impose my style onto it very much and just kind of make it feel like it's it's a own separate thing over the years he was doing more and more and then to, to the point where we had talked about doing a like a compilation of all of them so they were all on one in one place so you didn't have to listen to a song then flip the record then listen to a song then it just it's tedious probably for the past four years we've talked about doing this this christmas record and then it finally started to come to fruition this year but dave decided that instead of doing like a compilation he wanted it to feel more like a cohesive Christmas record and so he he spent a while kind of figuring out the sequencing and remixing songs so that they all work together as as a record like any with any project uh, I, I like to try to pick Dave's brain and and see what he has in mind on things and to my benefit and uh, uh, I guess it Dave is happy with it too he every conversation kind of ends up being the same like I don't know I just just do something and I'm sure you'll like it and that's kind of what I do each time and Dave is aware that these are not the merriest of Christmas songs and so he kind of wanted it a little moody uh the, there's a lot of isolation on the record and he wanted that to come across through the artwork and I agree with that but I also wanted it to feel ha have that feeling of the the lushness of the holidays even though it's cold outside 
year inside and that that warmth and that really the only warmth is is coming through on that window and it's it's a si singular person that that speaks to the isolation of it and 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 then at, at that point it's it's up to the viewer to determine whether whether that's a happy person in there or if that's a sad lonely person because because that's that's ultimately how how you respond to the music as well different people take away different things when when you hear the same thing and that's that's why it resonates with with more people i i mostly treated it as like another seven inch um one that that fit in with the rest yet feeling distinct from the rest as well so with this one, I, I kind of I wanted to strip the red and green out of it to, to take a step away from that. Um, also, because that kind of speaks to the isolation of the holiday. You know, if you don't have red and green and it's just cold and icy, that I think that 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 speaks to um, what what Dave wanted ultimately was, um, you know, something that that spoke to kind of the the, the bummerness of the records. <laughs> Storytelling was an important element of Ledoux's process. I came into it wanting to create a narrative, but I wanted the narrative to feel vague and be open to interpretation. I don't want to beat anybody over the head with a ham-fisted message. I, I want different people to look at something differently. Since it's a silhouette, you don't know whether he's looking out or whether he's looking in. He could be waiting for, you know, at the window waiting for somebody to, to show up, um, or he could he could be entertained, like he could be playing charades inside the house for all you know. Probably not. He's probably, yeah. Uh, but but again, that's that's open to, to interpretation. I've been saying he, but it, it could very well be a she as well. And that that's the beauty of just having a little dot for a head and a, a line for a body. It could be any age. It could be any gender. It could be any range of emotions. Simultaneously have emotion but the emotion is also stripped away from it at the same time. The design and illustration work of Ledoux relies heavily on traditional methods of brainstorming. Everything for me starts with a pencil sketch, and I, I, I try to use the computer as little as possible. Typically, I, I try to only use it for color purposes. Um, like, I, I try to draw everything on paper just because it it has a warmth and kind of a, a soul to it that that i i feel like just digital lacks a lot of times digital is definitely getting better and and it fools me at times but i like drawing on paper it feels nice and it's kind of it's kind of comforting to have a stack of paper that has these drawings on them and it ultimately just kind of feels fake or not real like it doesn't exist if if i don't use kind of more tactile traditional materials and then and then getting into the process of of building the image um basically i just i draw all of these pieces and then and then i bring them into the computer and then i just start building from there sometimes i have a pretty focused idea of how it should look and then i just go from start to finish whereas with this one there, there, there's a lot of nuance in it, and so that took kind of going back and forth with, with color and, and adding things in and then taking some things out and just, just kind of working it a, l a little bit more, kind of more, more in, a, in a painterly sort of way, I guess. Capturing the complex tone of Bazan's holiday songs was no easy task. To help create this look, Ledoux heavily focused his attention on the balance of colors within his illustration. With colors, I like to do one shade off from kind of what you would you would see as like the traditional color. So if if it's a green, I, I typically go all up on the yellow and then pull back on the cyan a little bit more or push the cyan a little bit more. It, it, it just creates a, a nice, unique color palette. I think if, if you just go with, with like the standard kind of like, oh, this is the perfect green or this is the perfect blue, then it it feels a little flat to me. Like making things a little bit dustier or a little more vibrant is, well, it, it just looks good to me. My first job is making myself happy with it. And then if I'm happy with it, then then I can show it to, to Dave or whoever whoever the client is. So yeah, the, the color palette, you take a standard blue and then you just make it a little dustier. And then, and then it has 
a little more personality, I guess. And like like with this with this record, I'm I'm using kind of a pastel-y sort of palette, but but adding, you know, 10% black or 15% black, it it dusties it up. Or adding the the gradient from the pinkish hue up up to the blue. Just going darker on that is it it just makes sense. Ledoux explains his history with colors and how he has developed his picking process. It probably came with screen printing. I've I've done screen printed posters for years. Um, when I when I was at, still at Sub Pop, uh, the art department was myself and Jeff Kleinsmith. So I I think it all comes from just picking like looking at the Pantone booklet. You know, you could either do this color right here, you know, which is a standard blue, or you you go a couple pages over on on the fan and you have you have this like kind of weird it's not green but it's it's not that standard blue either it's kind of a, a greenish blue and that looks cool and that yeah let's let's do that or you P, there is pms yellow and that is kind of the standard yellow but but when you go up like to to i think it's 109 you kind of have this school bus yellow that's that's a little different and it, it has a little a little warmth to it and it's it's nice and so I, I think that it probably comes from that and you know when you're just choosing colors on on the computer you you have your little slider bars and you can just it's it's really not much different than than the PMS fan you know you just I, I want a little more cyan in this or I want a little less magenta screen printing has informed how colors go together um, because uh, with screen printing, you can overprint colors. So you have, if you have a, if you print a pink, you can print a blue on top of that pink, and it becomes purple. And that kind of helps inform the pinks and the blues that you choose, also because that that goes to create that purple. And um, and then you, I guess it's, and then you have a little family of colors. You have your pink and your blue, and then your little purple baby. And <laughs> um, they ha like like a fan. I'm I'm going to run with this metaphor. And like a family, they influence each other, and uh, they're happy. <laughs> Similar to his process of sketching, Ledoux took a more manual approach to the typography for the record. So with the type, I uh, I just I have a folder of. Um, there are those old Dover type books and uh, just scanned a, a ton of pages. Uh, just anytime there's there's a project and I want something out of that, I'll, I'll scan a page and then I'll, I'll um, like streamline it, convert it to like uh, trace the paths and then and then I just keep that. And so I have this this small little folder file folder of computer file file folder of these typefaces and um that one just seemed to work I, I liked how you know the end drops down a little bit and I, I tweaked it a little bit just so that it it felt cohesive and and it felt thoughtful and and created just for this record and um yeah and that's that's how that's ultimately how it came about it just it felt like the right one I, I the the downside of having these these files of of scan type is if you want to try a different typeface you have to go drag the d drag the a drag the v drag the i drag the d and then and then if that's kind of feeling well then you drag a b then you drag an a then you drag a z then it drag an a then it, then you drag an n um but other otherwise you just abort mission at at the at the david and try something else and that process is is not unlike how I prefer to draw things also um, because I feel like when you hand place type it's it's a little more random than than it would be if if you were just to type out with a font and and those those slight differences I think are there's there's a little bit of magic in in those in those differences I think that anytime the human hand is involved in something it's just warmer and it's it's frankly better unless unless you want something cold and sterile which which does have its place in things but it rarely has its place within uh, the work the kind of work that I do I wanted it to have a container of sorts so that it stood apart from from the illustration I, I felt like 
like if if you tried to incorporate David Bazan, Dark Sacred Night in with the image, then it would take away from the image. Um, whereas this is it's 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 kind of a stamp. And then and then color wise, like it's it's golden, which which kind of, which references the holidays. Um, there's just always a lot of gold in Christmas ornaments or or whatever. But it also the yellow ties in with the yellow of the window. Um, so that really becomes the strong focal point as well. In addition to Dark Sacred Night, Ledoux was tasked with creating the artwork for a companion EP, an idea that he originally developed with Bazan. And I was getting down to the wire, and, and it was really, frankly, stupid of me to suggest this because I only had maybe a week to do this record, and here I'm proposing, I want to do two records in a week, not just one which wasn't very well thought out on my part, but that it, it just, it made sense to me to, to do these two records. Like there was something about my initial sketch that I really liked a lot. And that also spoke to kind of what, what that EP is about. You know, it, it shouldn't feel super finished really. It's, it's kind of these four songs that didn't fit anywhere else. With a task of creating artwork that matches the tone of the record, Ledoux created something special with Dark Sacred Night's album art. It's a unique piece that leaves the audience to interpret the emotions that are on display. I'm happy with it. I, I haven't actually seen the, the jackets yet, but uh, I'm, I'm excited too. Yeah, I, I think, I think it, it all came together really well. It feels distinct. I, I feel like when you, when you spread all of the singles out and then look at it within the context of look at the the LP in the context of these singles I feel like it's it's a, a fitting addition yeah yeah I, I think that it works Missing Artwork is a collaboration of Chris Lantinen and myself Michael Paul Escanuelas. We are part of the Modern Vinyl family of podcasts, which represents other great shows like Misaligned and Vinyl Crawl. Check out modern-vinyl.com to see the latest vinyl news, features, and to find out more information about our podcast family. Thank you to Mark Redito for our theme music. And of course, thank you to Jesse Ledoux for talking with us. We are still in our podcast infancy, so please go and subscribe to our show on iTunes or whatever podcast service you favor, and leave us a review telling us how much you love us and the show. Then go share us with your friends. We're always on the hunt for new listeners. Thank you for listening.